Um, yeah, first of all, we just saw it to Damien McCrory, um, who I, I guess for you, I mean, it's an old cliche to say when you get a player back from injury, it's like a new signing. But for you, you obviously you've not worked with him before. It's entirely like having an, another member of your squad, isn't it, for the final push in? Yeah, it is. Um, it obviously, he's struggled a little bit since I came in, just building up his uh, fitness and coming back from the, the injury. But he's been training well. We've kind of, I think the physios have done a really good job kind of managing a program for him so he can get back onto the pitch and be available for the games. And, and I think he's obviously enjoying his football being back. And, and it's good to have, yeah, what is a, a very good footballer ready um, and fit again. He always strikes me as a very bright, positive character as well to throw into the mix at this time of the season for you. Yeah, he is. He's good in the dressing room. I think the lads have got a lot of respect for him. He's experienced and, and he's all in. You know, when we when we train, the guy's all in 100% on every action. So, you know, I think having somebody with that kind of mentality around is always a, a boost for everybody. It's going well at the moment. You're on this unbeaten run. You come up against in Wrexham a team also in a great run. These are the games that it's all about in, aren't they? These games right at the end of the season, two informed teams. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're informed. Likewise, we are, um, you know, identical kind of positions in the table and a lot riding on the game, but these are the games that you want to be a part of. It's boring to be at the end of the season with mid-table mediocrity and not playing for anything. So we want to have that kind of pressure on us and, and we, we enjoy it. So, yeah, we look forward to, to what is a really big game. How much of a game like this, when you've been playing well over recent weeks anyway, how much of it comes down to the focus that we talked about last week, that mentality in games like this? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I think that we, we're in a good place at the moment in terms of how we're playing and, and you know, we didn't win the last game, which we were disappointed about. And there was a couple of areas, obviously the two goals that we needed to be better on. So it gives us something to, to kind of have a focus on. But it's, uh, yeah, these games are always going to be kind of tight games and competitive games and, and small margins can win them. Have you been looking yet at the remaining fixtures and who plays who and the rest of the league and who plays who and what what might happen and what might not? No, not really. Um, I just concentrate on ourselves. You know, if we go and do the, the, the job against Wrexham and then go and do the job against Weymouth and Bromley, we don't need to be concerned too much with everybody else. It's I think you only start looking over your shoulder when it's not in your control. Um, so at the moment, while we have control of it, I just focus really on what we can do. And if we do that, then we, it doesn't matter so much. Then we go into the playoffs and however it falls, it falls. Yeah, because you know, I think two wins this week, if you beat Wrexham and if you win at the weekend against Weymouth as well, that will do it. That will guarantee um, a playoff place. How important is that going into this final spell that it, it is now in your hands? You're back in the playoff places and it, it, it is actually physically in your own hands. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of felt like it's always been in our hands. Um, we've always had those kind of, even when we dropped out, we've had those extra games that we knew that would come up. And, and obviously we've got in there still with the extra games. So, um, yeah, it's kind of been the same situation, but we've stayed calm and focused with what we need to do. And, and we're going to remain like that for the last three games and just work extremely hard to, to try and get the points we need. Uh, tickets obviously have been going incredibly quickly um, the club had to uh, yeah. suspend sales this morning um, for, for the home game on Saturday how pleasing has that been to see from your point of view how, how desperate fans are to get back in this weekend brilliant honestly brilliant it's so strange like obviously coming to a club and probably some of the players are the same that they haven't met the fans and not had that kind of contact everything's over this like Zoom and people see you on doing an interview and that's about it but they, they don't come and see the team and, and feel the invite and we you know fans are so missed around the ground and I know especially here uh, talking to people the atmosphere on a match day is fantastic so can't wait for the, the fans to be in the ground it's going to make such a difference for us and it will really give us a push um, so yeah excited and, and obviously glad to, to see that the tickets were snapped up probably helped scoring a few goals and winning a few games is giving a bit of enthusiasm to everybody as well and, and, and you know we hope they, they bring that enthusiasm uh, against Weymouth at the weekend Great. No doubt we'll talk loads more about the fans later in the week, but yeah. for now, best of luck against Rex. And thanks. Top man. Thank you. Hi, and I just wanted to uh, ask you about um, next season as well as this season. I know you've got a lot on your plate right now, but obviously because it's such a strange season and teams are releasing players further up the ladder, how much is trying to sort of balance the two with trying to cope with what's going on in front of you, but also having your eye on 
potential signings next season from from teams that, that are releasing players further up the ladder. Yeah, it's a it's a busy job. <laughs> it's a busy job, Lee. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we you know I'm massively focused on the upcoming games, but at the same time, you know, we want to build, so we understand what we need with with the season coming up next season as well. Um, so we we really have to be proactive. I think there's a lot of people within the club working uh, also with the recruitment and I think we're getting much closer and clearer with the way in which we want to play, which makes it easier to recruit as well. Um, so yeah, we, we of course are balancing the two. We're, we're looking at what we need next season and of course we've got a lot of good players in the building as well that um, will most likely have an impact next season also. I, I was interestingly enough. I mean, because obviously you're in the playoffs. I mean, have you got two separate lists now of, of players? Because what happens if you go up? Do those list of targets alter? And if you stay down, do, does it change at all? You know. No, I mean, look, we want the best possible side. You know, whichever league we're in, if we're in the national league, then we still want to recruit a team that would be successful in League Two. Also, so I don't think it changes massively. Um, I think we have an idea of the kind of profile of player that we want. Um, you know, should we go up, then you know maybe we get the possibility to add one or two more. That could be the the case. But at the moment, we're just looking at uh, players that we think are going to be good players for Notts County, and that is uh, regardless of the league. Uh, to be honest with you, the top part of this league I don't see being particularly different to, you know, mm. the majority of the teams in League Two. So I think the recruitment's quite similar either way. Mm. Uh, in terms of the game tomorrow night, I mean, obviously you beat Wrexham at home, and that was a really solid performance in the end. Um, what do you make of, of tomorrow night's game? Because obviously both teams are in, in great form. What do you think is going to be key to coming out victorious tomorrow night? Um, I think we have to continue with what we've been doing. Um, I think I read that in the last four games, I think we've had sixty-eight shots um, in the in the past four games. So obviously our attacking play has been strong and we want to maintain that we don't just change going away to a team in form we want to attack the game but we have to respect that they're also a strong team with with a lot of threats so um you know if we can manage those threats that'll be great for us they're, they're a team that's i think they're like the third lowest possession team in the league so i think they're happy to, to sit back and counter and they're very very good at it um so I definitely if we have the ball and we're creating we have to be very aware of the, their threat on the the counter attack. Um, and in terms of um, injuries, uh, how's Connor Rawlinson? Because I know obviously he missed the game at the weekend. Do you think he'll be fit tomorrow? Uh, I'd say right now it's 50 50. Um, he had some treatment and he's got a bit more treatment this afternoon. So I'll have a meeting with the physios uh, after this and we'll just decide. Maybe it'll be a late fitness test tomorrow, I think. Um, but yeah, at the moment he's 50 50. Uh, any other injury concerns at all? No, not from the other night. No, that was the, the only Connell at the moment. Um, everybody else is, of course, other than the ones like Lacey and, and Cal that are out, but the, the rest are all good. Um, I meant, meant to ask you about Alex, actually. I think last time we spoke, you said that he was probably going to go for another scan. Has that, has that, has that happened? Yeah, I think... I don't, I don't expect now to see him the, the rest of the season. Uh, he's probably going to need an op. Um, oh no! So yeah, but it's not. Uh, hopefully, it's not a long-term thing. Um, we'll get that fixed fairly soon. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't an, uh, anticipate him being back this season now. Uh, how much of a how much of a blow is that? Because uh, I mean, he came in for he was injured, I think, wasn't he, when you came in, and then yeah, he, he, was. he came back into the side side and, and did really well for you in those couple of games that he did play. He did. Yeah, he's a top player. No question, he's a top player. Um, but you know. Sadly, he's not been available, but we've, we've played well recently. Players have come in and, and done their job. Um, so, you know, we'll focus on that and, and Alex will focus on his rehab and, and certainly he'll come back stronger. Well, what's that like as a new manager coming into a club when you've got, you know, Callum Roberts, one of the best players in the National League. You haven't got him, he's injured. Alex Lacey, probably rated as one of the best centre-halves in the league as well. Uh, what I mean, just what is that like to deal with as a new manager coming into a club? Because imagine you you just want your best players available all the time. Yeah, but it, it is what it is. I think as a manager, you you have to deal with these situations. You will have injured players, and sometimes top players can get injured, and and you know you hope that other players then step up. And, and we have, if you look recently, you know the attacking threat of of Callum Roberts hasn't been there, but Ruben Rodriguez has stepped up. Um, 
You know, Jim O'Brien scored a hat trick the other night, so other players have contributed. Um, so it is a squad game, and and every player has to to work well. And I think if you have a good system, players can drop in, um, and and of course give you what what is missing from those. But in an ideal world, everybody's fit, and and your top players are are always available. But I think the players that have come in, and certainly recently, have really shown the qualities that they've got. So I'm I'm more than happy with that. I wanted to ask you about Ruben, actually, because I mean he's obviously in such stunning form. But I'm just more interested about the the role that he's been given because I know he plays up front alongside Carl Wooden, but it, it, it looks like he's been given a license to to roam wherever he can hurt the opposition. It, w- would that be fair to say? I mean, what kind of instructions have you given him up there? Because he was talking to us after the game on Saturday and said, ideally, my best position is a number ten, but obviously we don't play with one. But it just seems it it, it looks like you, he's almost been told, well. Just go wherever you feel you can hurt the opposition. Would that be fair? Kind of, yeah. I mean, obviously within the system. I mean, we we say we don't play with a ten, but often when we play with our eights, they're playing like two number tens. So, you know, systems can get like misconstrued at times. But he's playing just off Kyle. But yeah, I've given him license to. I think sometimes when you're fixed position. Um, you can be easier to pick up a mark and take out the game. And I've kind of, yeah, given him a little bit more freedom when we have the ball to flood areas and create a little bit. And, and we want to try and find him on the ball. So, yeah, he's he's had a little bit more freedom there. Uh, but obviously, one of the key things that I've, I've noticed with Ruben is that his reaction when we lose the ball, his defensive positioning and his pressing has been good. So it's all well and good having freedom when we have the ball. But it's massively important that he does his job without. And at the moment, he's doing a great job defensively as well. When when the opponents have the ball, he's in position a lot. And um, I think that's uh, that's obviously massively important because sometimes a free roll means that players can strut about and not do the defensive <laughs> bit. But, but certainly Ruben's been doing the defensive bit in a, in a really good way. So then it works great for us.